session. Uh, my name is Sofia Lampis. Um, I work as an editor and coordinator and educator at a website called Stockholm Challan. Uh, and it's in the city of Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, and I will tell you some more about this website during my presentation. Uh, I'm here to present a project. It's called Wiki Welcome. And uh, uh, I will start by giving you a presentation of the project and some of its findings and outcome when we're doing this in Sweden. And then uh, you will also be able to try the Wiki Welcome method. So I won't be talking for an hour, you will be working as well. Um, and also, uh, if you have any questions during this session, please, yeah, don't hesitate to, to ask, because it's, yeah, it's only me here, so just wave your hand. And also, if you don't understand something that I'm saying or so, just wave your hand and I will try to clarify it. I was more like interested in history in school, <laughs> and uh, so. Um, so my aim with this session is to inspire you and give you some ideas how to do this project at home in your own museum or in your environment if you're working in a museum or in an archive or so. Um, and I also because now we'll show you how we did this in Sweden, but. Uh, please think about how this project could take place in your country while, uh, if you're supposed to do this at home. And Stockholm Challa, the organization that I'm working for, and uh, uh, Wikimedia Sweden, an organization that works with Wikipedia a lot, uh, we uh, did this project together and it was founded by Vinnova, a Swedish innovation agency. And our main uh, questions were, how can students of today develop their understanding of history and also be a part of history making? How can museums, archives and libraries support the students' information and media skills, develop their critical thinking and increase their knowledge about creating digital content? And at least, how can we make an understandable link between uh, the physical and the digital space this work that we wanted to work with. I don't know if you have like the same kind of question that you want to work with in your organization, uh, but we were, it's a kind of like the wide questions, but we wanted to make it wide, so uh, it's a bit, little bit like a trial and error project, so we didn't want to like, okay, this is what we're going to do. We want to think kind of like wild and crazy from the beginning. So this project is based on a Swedish model, uh, but the method is transferable to various learning environments and yeah, museums, archives, schools can make their own uh, and generate their own Wiki Welcome projects uh, using open web platforms where free knowledge can easily be shared. And that was our aim as well. Like we would, we were not when we were doing this project. We did not like do our own web page or like do a known platform or so. We wanted to use the existing ones while making this because uh, our organization is a kind of small organization. We don't have that money to like build something new uh, uh, that would like sustain for a long time. Uh, so we wanted to see what kind of existing platforms can we use uh, when we're doing this project. And that's also a question for you to think of. What kind of existing platforms can I, uh, can my organization use if I wanted to do this? And our target group uh, were students uh, in years one to 12, quite like a broad. <laughs> and we've been focused mainly on primary, elementary and high school while doing this. Uh, and I think it's, you can do it with uh, most students, but you have to do it a different way if you're working with a small or if you're working with the, the big ones. So, the method. We started by identifying the students' favorite sites near their school. So each of them uh, were able to choose one place that they really liked. And we wanted uh, 
the distance to this site should be like in the walkable distance from the school because uh, I don't know probably it's the same with like United States but Sweden is a very diverse country and uh, many of the children their parents were not born there so if you're like you know doing your family tree you can't really do that sometimes and then it's not like really like equal for the students in the class but by starting by the school everybody goes to the same school and then it's more equal because then everybody we were also able to visit all their places so the place should be uh, walkable uh, close to their schools uh, and then they wrote um, their own story uh, why this place were special to them uh, if they're really young children then their teacher or somebody helped them or they wrote together uh, they also recorded it sometimes but the elder wrote their own and for example they choose playgrounds you see one of them there uh, their own street this is Walter I, he will be the example during this session he's 12 year old and he, he choose, uh, chose his own street and then it's the public library and some children also you know chose candy shops and so on kind of interesting places and the student they published their personal story on a web platform it's called Platzer uh, or places in English. Uh, is it, uh, this is run by the Swedish National Heritage Board and the aim is to collect and share everyday life of Sweden. Uh, and here anyone could like log in, you can use your Facebook account or you can just like use an email. With the younger children we did like a, a common account for the class so they, they like published with one account and then they wrote with like their signature or their name or so so their stories were like different stories but in the same account and uh, um, you um, you see um, I can show you the next one uh, when you like write your story you have this map views you put out your little balloon on the map and then you start writing about that place uh, and here are all the places close to Walter school uh, it's uh, Gamla Ensked is part of Stockholm and uh, here is his house um, and all those stories they became like one big collection of the Swedish memory so this is like the personal story you don't have to have any like sources or so it's just like you and your what you think is important And this is Walter's stories. Uh, he writes that uh, it's a very nice taste, it's a place to live at, that they every year have a big party, they put out tables in the street, and the children, they play football to get together and so on. Uh, and this is like online. So he could, after doing this, he could go home and show his parents. The next day he could like continue writing on his story and they could like share their stories with each other. Uh, the student's next task was to seek information about the history of their chosen site. And this kind of like local history you can't really find in the history books, you have to look elsewhere. Um, we use the school's library. Uh, you see the librarian standing holding up a book about Stockholm. We went to an uh, uh, archaeological site. Uh, to find out about the, the story about Julsta, another place in Stockholm, and we also searched the web uh, about information. And uh, often in Stockholm, they used this fantastic website, Stockholm Källan, uh, where I'm working with, uh, with lots of information, like local information from different museums, archives, and libraries in Stockholm. And I will now give you a short introduction.
So this is Stockholm Challenge. Uh, this is our main site. You can scroll down uh, and you get lots of articles about different uh, themes, about migration, about different places in Stockholm and so on. And also you can dive into some historical uh, material. And I will go for the cats, because <laughs> I think you're interested in cats. <laughs> so these are some of the Swedish historical cats. You got like 32 of them here, and I will show you one. It's my favorite one. <laughs> and then you can like zoom in. <laughs> it's okay, quite kind of fun. Uh, so this is a cat, it's from 1953. You have some information. It's from a um, cat ex exhibition that took place in Östermalms Marmorhallar. And where is Östermalms Marmorhallar? Then you can find it on the map. So this is a present day map, and then you could go back in time until yeah, 1956, it's kind of close. Maybe it takes some time for it to The internet connection. got it and then you can move back even further you can go to like the one of the oldest and my favorite one is from 1642 that's the best one I think you can zoom out a little bit and then you can compare it with a map <coughs> today and then you can like zoom and see in like in the 1642 there were lots of boats and stuff and And you can also, uh, if you want to choose a place, you can do that. I'm doing that thing here. And see what kind of materials you will find. Oh, you get 17 sources. Uh, and I would like to see. No. you will see like hard working men in the beginning of the 1900s and stuff. They are tearing down uh, a maternal hospital that went, yeah, it was not uh, that um, modern in the beginning of the 20th century, so they were like tearing it down. Apart. And the boss is like, well, you should like stab it here a little So this is the kind of material that you can find in Stockholm Cella and kind of easy to use for the children. And also while watching this film, there are also some like more information connected. You have some photo, you have some letter about this, uh, what they thought when they were like tearing this apart. And stuff. So Stockholm Cella was a really like useful place uh, for the students to seek information. And I guess that this is the kind of information maybe you have in your museums or your archives and so on that you even though you don't uh, maybe have all the pictures that we have, you still have the essential information. So, Walter, he found this old picture of a street uh, from 1910, when the houses were quite new, and then he took his own so, and compared it, and it looks kind of the same. And I think that was, he was quite interested in that as well. And also the English row house, it is built from like an English model. So they were very like uh, modern when they were new. Um, so Walter, he wrote a text, uh, what he learned while uh, searching for the history. And then it, he put it online on a webpage called Wikimini. 
And uh, I don't know if you, you heard, probably you heard of Wikipedia. How many of you use Wikipedia? Yeah, kind of everyone. I think everyone does it, even though they don't admit it. Some always. Uh, uh, how many of you have edited Wikipedia? Yeah, good. Uh, have, how many of you have heard about Wikimini? No. And that's not so strange because it only exists in Swedish and French and in some other language. Uh, but I have a solution to, there, to that and I will come to that. Uh, uh, I will just talk some about uh, Wikimini because with the younger children we used Wikimini and they were edited to Wikimini and they, pu they put their factual text about the history of their chosen sites on Wikimini. And the older students in like high school, they used Wikipedia instead. And the reason why we uh, decided not to use the Wikipedia with the younger ones is that Wikipedia, it, yeah, you've all kind of edited it. It's kind of hard to, to do it. And it's very, at least in Sweden, if you're like doing it the wrong way, it just takes a few seconds and then it's gone. So if you want to work with like the students uh, working with Wikipedia, you have to be really, uh, they have to be like really careful like following all those rules and doing it the right way, otherwise they would be erased. Um, so, Wikimini, it's kind of the same as uh, Wikipedia. Uh, kids are writing uh, facts for other kids. And it's also, you have to cite the sources, it's, yeah, share free knowledge, you recognize this from Wikipedia. And also collaborate with each other. You don't own your own text, you can like always make it better and help each other and so on. And I think this is a kind of new thing as well, because often the children, they, they write their own text and that's their text. But here they like changed the text with each other and like uh, helped each other make the text better. And I think that's the kind of like interesting thing also if you're thinking about like media and information skills and so on, that's a really a skill to understand that. And here is Walter's text. Uh, maybe you can like also recognize some of the structure from Wikipedia. You have the blue words, the same as Wikipedia, lending to other articles, and you have red words, and in the future maybe there will be articles. <laughs> uh, and also it was quite interesting working with this class. They were about yeah, 12 years old, and they wanted as many blue words as they could in their text, so they were actually writing other articles while doing this to like improve their text. <laughs> uh, and also uh, some of them were like really getting along with like in, in Wikimini on their spare times. One, uh, one of the kids, she was really into My Little Ponies. She, she wrote this like a super long article about My Little Ponies. And it's quite interesting because she's still working on that. Like one and a half year later, she's still like improving that article. And that's, I think it's super interesting because here, these are like the new Wikipedians. If you learn those, then they will be like, and also uh, today, uh, most of the people that edit Wikipedia are men. And I think if the girls and also like uh, a wide diversity of children are starting to be uh, familiar uh, in, in working with Wikimini, they will be the future Wikipedians. Um, yeah, and in English, you have simple Wikipedia. I don't know if you've been working with that. Did you know that it existed? Yeah? Because I think, um, yeah, this is Wikimedia in French, and um, yeah, and the simple uh, English Wikipedia. I looked up Denver on the simple English Wikipedia, and I think here you could really like uh, uh, make this text better. <laughs> you could absolutely improve this one. And I think this is something, if you haven't checked it out, I think this could be a possibility. If you want to do this project uh, in an English-speaking country, you could definitely try to work with uh, the Simple English Wikipedia. I don't know, have you been working with the Simple English Wikipedia page? It's like uh, more accessible? Or? Yeah, uh, exactly. It's The language is it's no, more sorry. simple, no, exactly. And also, if you read like the, the articles, the, the language are, is much more simple, and also uh, uh, it feels that it's not that like hard on like the structure, and uh, uh, it feels a little bit more like Wikimini, I think. Uh, yeah? Hi, um, 
I found is that it is good for children to read and digest, yeah. but it wouldn't be um, an equivalent to Wiki Mini in children contributing to, no, because it's that. actually difficult for a child to actually write in mm. a simple language for mm. others. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah. So if you think about distilling something down to an actual simple statement, that's mm. different from actually, you know. So anyway, mm. um, I thought a lot about this. Yeah, okay. this yeah. Mm. But it is a very good resource yeah. for a child to read, like as an entry point into um, Wikipedia. But I love the idea of Wikimedia, though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And also, I don't know, because some of the like really young children, they were not writing their own Wikimini article. They were doing maybe one for their class, and maybe that would be possible to do yes. under uh, the simple English Wikipedia. Yes. But it's like the, the, the thing that you're like using the existing one, because these are the places where I already have so many like readers and so on. Yes. So, yes, and during our work, uh, uh, we also did a walk. Uh, and where we were looking at the students' different places, and the students, they were presenting their places, like standing on their sites for each other, and in their evolutions, uh, and our, when we asked them what was the best thing about this project, many of the children and the students said that this was absolutely the best moment, where they were able to share their stories, not only like their personal story, but also like all the history they learned. And also, uh, yeah, like seeing each other's places and hearing each other's stories, they thought were very, very interesting. And in the end, the next step, uh, or the last step, their last task was to think about how they wanted their place to be in the future. And this is also quite interesting because many, many of the children wanted their places to be exactly the same. And uh, I don't know if it's like that, if it's some kind of like universal, if you like something very much, then you want it to be always the same. Sometimes the children thought that there would be like more fun things to do for children and more like meeting places where you can like interact with others and so on. Uh, and also in one of the areas when we did this project, the, like the city developers on like the city office in that part of, of Stockholm were very inter this, interested in, this, in the students or the children's stories about their places and what they wanted uh, the place to be in the future. So they actually invited them to come and like tell them about there. And I think that's a really nice thing. That was not something that we planned from the beginning. It was, uh, but I think it was a really yeah, good result. And this is Walter presenting his, his place. He wanted it to be the same. And he also wanted to live there and have children. And here are some other presentations. Uh, uh, some of the children, uh, they uh, invited their parents to join this. And it was also very interesting to see the interaction between the children, like telling their, their, their family, family, not only like their personal stories, but also like the history of the place where they are living right now. And uh, it was a very like interesting meeting uh, that was super positive. So, what uh, did they think about this? Uh, and here are some of the student thoughts uh, that it was fun to write together and to change text and to make each other's text better. Uh, it was hard to find different sources uh, and also to know which sources are good. I think that's, yeah, that's something I struggle with as well. Uh, and also the best thing was to write and find the facts but you could not, um, and then write about it, but you could not copy, so you have to think for yourself. And this is, I think this is kind of interesting because this is really, you know, the skills, like the critical thinking and the knowledge about like information media and skills and so on. So I think we really, you know, got to the point, if you know, if I showed you the questions from before in, um, in the beginning, and I think you have like some, I think we managed to do some of them actually. And then the teacher's opinion, um, they thought it was time well spent. Uh, some of the, the, uh, like the classes we worked with, they uh, invested a lot of time in this project. They were working for 
uh, yeah, many weeks with this, not all the time, but like uh, yeah, one day a week, maybe for nine weeks or something. But they thought it was very like time well spent. Uh, and also this work, it gave the students a greater expertise in using um, and discussing the source's usefulness. Uh, one teacher said that she could actually see after doing this project when the students were like doing an assignment about uh, using sources or using Wikipedia or so, she could see that they were better readers <laughs> uh, after doing this. And I think if you know how, how it's working, even though you work with Wikimini, it still has the same structure that Wikipedia, and then you're like, then you know how it's done. <laughs> and also, this project has created a huge interest among the students. And also, I think this by working with this uh, like the project uh, had also demonstrated to give the students a stronger democratic voice by letting them share their stories and their places. For example, with the uh, like the planning, the city planning office that I told you about. It's, this is like a real. They got like real knowledge, and it's like for real in a way that m many things you do in school they are not. And also. Um, uh, as one, one student said, the knowledge that anyone, anywhere can access and read what, read what they write made the students invest and want to join this project. But also, uh, as one student said, my knowledge feels more real this way. And I think that's also quite interesting. Uh, I will now show you a, a short film that we did. It's in Swedish. You can learn some Swedish, but it also has some English uh, subtitles. Leave my presentation and see if it's working. I don't know if you can read. You have to move. Is it okay like that, or should I? like a history teacher in high school.
So, now it's your turn. <laughs> uh, now, uh, we are going to do a workshop. Uh, and I would like you to try the uh, Wiki Welcome map. So we don't have uh, Wikimini, we don't have Plaza here, so uh, we will do it in a bit differently. And um, uh, Denver and this conference, that's the thing that unites us now. That's the school, <laughs> if you understand what I mean. Um, so, uh, we I want you to work uh, by yourself, or if you pair up, you can work uh, with a friend. And your, um, the thing you should do is to, um, okay, I can show you the next, I don't know if you could log in here, you can either use the, uh, the web link or you can uh, use the QR code. If it's working, I will then change. So, then you will be able to see this signs in a few minutes. Technology. Are you seeing that? Okay, now your first talk task is to pick a special place in Denver. This is the place that unites us all. And you could pick a place at the conference, you can pick this room, you can pick your hotel, you can pick if you went to the art museum uh, or whatever. And you choose your place. You uh, put it under present, my place is, and then you write something short, why this place is special for you. And you could also, if you have like a photo or something, you can upload it with your like uh, personal story. And this is a platform called Padlet. I don't know if you used it before. No. Uh, it's uh, kind of like post-it, but it's online. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's, it's kind of an interesting tool to use, also together with children. Denver Art Museum. Cool. I will give you uh, some time to do this, and then uh, I will give you some more instruction. You don't have any pictures you can like do a drawing and then take a screenshot and upload that
working for you? Yes. I have some here. Wow. So many things. <laughs> really nice pictures. Okay, when you're like feeling ready, ready, doing your personal story, I will now write the next one. So, this is the history part. Now, your task is to get to know the history of your chosen site. And if it's like really hard to like found something from your exactly like that location, you then you can think a bit more like creative, think a little bit wider. Is there something that you know or that you will be able to get to know about the histories from yeah, this space? Um, and you can like search the web. I don't know if there is anyone from Denver here. Maybe you can ask that person. Um, or yeah, be creative. And then you write it down. You, you're you like using your same, the same place that you chose uh, in the present uh, my place is. Uh, and uh, then you're writing it down in the column past my place was and also be sure to put some like sources or references as well so you can prove your facts it's kind of interesting doing this because it's always so super quiet <laughs> it's a quiet workshop <laughs> And also it's kind of, kind of nice because I don't know if you noticed, you can also go back and like uh, put in some more information if you want to and so on. 
but at this point you can only like uh, um, work with your own, I think. But as a teacher, uh, while having this view, then I could go in, uh, because I'm the owner of the document, I can go in and like, you know, correct spellings or whatever. Yeah, so you use this tool like for building the first version of some article mm -hmm. and then when there's the final draft the, then you go to to Wikipedia or mm -hmm. mini wiki yeah you can, the, you can say that uh, and actually I didn't this one I kind of invented while I was doing workshop okay. uh, especially because I did this in on the museum and the web in Vancouver as well so we have one sheet about the Vancouver if you're interested in that one <laughs> Uh, because it, I think it's kind of easy because then you see the present, you, you, you see the past and then we're going to do one for the future as well. But while we were doing this in the school, then we started up like uh, working only with like the, okay, our places, which are them, and then we're like collecting them. And then we were like either doing it on a, like in a Word document or we were like, uh, like writing, writing on the white, the yeah. Things. Yeah. So like the old way. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think this is a kind of interesting tool, actually. We've been, I've been using this uh, when I'm doing the, you know, post-it if I don't have post-it with me or something like that, because yeah, it's, yeah. Kind of, uh, it's kind of easy. I don't know what you think about it, but um, I kind of like it. <laughs> and also that you can like upload photos and so on. Mm -hmm. So let's see the Brown Palace. fantastic. <laughs> I will give you a few more minutes and then uh, uh, we will go on to the, the next one. I should check it out, yeah? yeah? Cool. Have you used that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it reminds me of the Stockholm site that you showed. Mm -hmm. You can pin a place and attach text or historical photographs. I think it uses Google Maps mm -hmm. as its platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't know if it's international. We use it in the United States. But mm -hmm. But then you could contribute, or yes. yeah, wow, yeah, yeah. history, pen. history pen. Yeah. Yeah. I heard someone else talk about it during this conference. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. I would definitely check that. Or anything like that. Huh? But, yeah. Cool. Are you using it? So I used it for a class that I took, mm -hmm. um, and I just tried to find my project and I couldn't. But, okay. Uh, <laughs> it seems like the site is still active. At huh? least. Yeah. Wow. I would write it down. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and if you're like feeling that you're finished, you're past, then you could go for the future. Yeah. What do you want your place to be in the future? And here you could be both like realistic or think wild. <laughs> That's always the easy one when someone t tells you to think wild. It's like, yeah, I'm so wild.
like historical photos you found. I was going to ask Sophia, how do you introduce the, the topic about uh, rights with, with kids and with this kind of projects? Mm. Because the sources, you can't, you can't be over everyone like mm. looking where they can get the, their information from. Mm. So how do you? You mean that so that the kids are not like mean to each other or something? No, 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 no. the rights, the, the copyright. Yeah, the copyrights. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a really important one. We're always talking about that. And also, it's, it's kind of, I don't know, if you're using uh, Stockholm Källan, all the materials there is free to use in the school. And also, uh, often um, I told them that they could use like the wiki commons, and we were like talking about that. And also, we, try, we, we really wanted them to take their own photos, like go out with an iPad or if they had a phone or so, if we were doing it together. So they would use their own photos and then upload them. But also that they should like put out the rights right. because they, it's their own, but that we were really like thinking uh, that it all should be like really free, you know, uh, like CC by uh, license, yeah. And that's a really important thing as well, because often the children are okay, oh, you should do uh, some schoolwork about this and use pictures, okay, but what kind of pictures can I actually use? And I think that's also a very important part. And also if you're like uploading your photos, what rights does ev everybody else, yeah. Mm. And also in Wikimini, uh, it's not connected with the Wikicommon database. Uh, because there are lots of pictures there that they don't think suits for Wikimini, actually. Oh. So then you have to like upload them again, uh, and it's it's easier. Than, I don't know if you've been uploading pictures in Wikicommons. It's kind of tricky, and it's easier in Wikimini. Uh, so they often we we want them to either upload their own pictures, or if they found like historical pictures, they have to see like in Wikicommons, then they could like download them and then upload them again, like with the, the, uh, with the right, uh, you know, names and uh, CC by licenses, yeah. And if they found pictures on the internet that they didn't know, then they couldn't use them. We were very, really like strict about that. Mm. So, uh, I think we, it's like just five minutes left. Um, what do you think of this? Interesting. Any reactions? Super fast. Huh? <laughs> Super fast. We did this in like half an hour. I think it's kind of fantastic. Uh, very good like contribution by you all. Um, and uh, is that this something that you could do at home, do you think? How would you do it? Do you have any thoughts? We have a project called Lenticlopedia, which is an, a wiki based on a historic, a historical bias of Colombian people and, and mm -hmm. some other topics related to our collections. So I think that we are we are thinking how are we going to involve uh, people around, and we work a lot with children. Mm -hmm. So this could be like a good process to take them to mini wiki, mm -hmm. create some mm -hmm. content mm -hmm. in Spanish mm -hmm. that, I, that I've seen that it, there's mm -hmm. nothing yet. And then to put them, that send them to the the final destination, which is the encyclopedia. So mm. I think it's really interesting. Mm. And I think also th this is kind of interesting to like divide it into present, past, and future. It's also what's what's my history, my opinion, my personal story. And also this is like the history that you can verify with sources and so on. It's a, it's a, like a different kind of information. They are both like really interesting information, but they are like, you know, From different yeah, different angles. And I think that's a kind of interesting thing too. And also to think about like the perspective, of what will it be in the future and so on. And these are like the future historical story comes. So I think it's, yeah, this is the, it's kind of interesting material. Yeah, do you have a question or something in the back?
Anyone else want to say something? Um, uh, I, I might just like last thought is that by doing this workshop, this like unites us a little bit more. <laughs> and I think that's one of the thing we wanted to do with this project. And also that we like, you know, that we learn something from each other. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, if you want some more information about Stockholm Shallan or some more information about this project and so on, please just uh, uh, come and take my card and we can have keep contact while I'm back in Sweden. Thank you very much.